In a world dominated by men and empires, one woman defied the odds to become the most famous female ruler in history. This is the story of Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of Egypt. Born into a dynasty of Greek origin, Cleopatra ascended to the throne in a time of turmoil and change. Her reign was marked by political intrigue, romantic alliances, and a fierce struggle for power. But who was this enigmatic queen? Was she the seductress as often portrayed in tales and dramas? Or was she a visionary leader? A diplomat who navigated her kingdom through the turbulent tides of a changing world? Our tale begins in the heart of Alexandria, in the majestic royal palace, where a young Cleopatra emerges not merely as a princess, but as a prodigy. Educated by the finest tutors, she was fluent in multiple languages and well-versed in philosophy, the arts, and the sciences. But Cleopatra's world was one of perpetual intrigue. The Ptolemaic dynasty, a Greek ruling family in Egypt, was a cauldron of internal strife and power struggles. Sibling rivalries and court conspiracies were the order of the day. Upon the death of her father, Ptolemy XII, a teenage Cleopatra ascends to the throne at just 18 years old. She is thrust into a realm of political gamesmanship, challenged to maintain her grip on the throne and the loyalty of her subjects. The early years of her reign were marked by a forced co-rulership with her 10-year-old younger brother, Ptolemy XIII. Their alliance, marred by distrust and competing interests, set the stage for a looming conflict. Despite the palace intrigues, Cleopatra embarked on ambitious projects. She sought to stabilize Egypt's economy, revitalize its culture, and strengthen its position as a Mediterranean power. But Cleopatra knew that to truly secure her throne, she needed to outmaneuver her rivals. She understood the art of political survival in a world where alliances were fragile and power was ephemeral. A storm was brewing within the walls of Alexandria. Cleopatra's co-rule with her brother, Ptolemy XIII, was turning sour, marred by a growing rift between the royal siblings. Ptolemy, young and impressionable, was increasingly swayed by his advisors, particularly the eunuch Pothinus and the general Achilles. These cunning courtiers sought to increase their own power, manipulating the young pharaoh to their ends. Cleopatra, astute and observant, quickly realized the changing tides at court. Her brother, once a co-ruler, was now becoming a puppet in the hands of those who wished to control Egypt's throne. The tension reached its zenith when Ptolemy advisors orchestrated Cleopatra's removal from power. Forced to flee Alexandria, Cleopatra found herself exiled, her throne usurped, her authority challenged. But Cleopatra was not one to yield to fate. In her exile, she gathered support, preparing to reclaim her throne. It was during this tumultuous time that Rome's great general, Julius Caesar, arrived in Egypt, altering the course of Cleopatra's destiny. Caesar arrived in Egypt, pursuing his rival, Pompey, only to find himself in the midst of a sibling rivalry for the Egyptian throne. He sought a resolution that would also secure Rome's interests in this vital region. Cleopatra, ever the strategist, concocted a plan to meet Caesar personally. In a daring and now legendary act, she had herself smuggled into Caesar's quarters, wrapped in a carpet. Unveiled before Caesar, Cleopatra's charisma and intelligence immediately captivated the Roman leader. Here was a queen who defied her exile, a woman who commanded respect and radiated authority. Their meeting marked the beginning of a powerful alliance. Cleopatra and Caesar's interests aligned. She needed his support to reclaim her throne, and he needed a stable Egypt to secure Rome's southern flank. But this alliance did not sit well with Ptolemy XIII and his advisors. The resulting conflict, known as the Alexandrian War, was a testament to the high stakes of ancient power politics. The siege of Alexandria was both a literal and a metaphorical storm, as Cleopatra and Caesar faced not only military opposition, but also the scrutiny of their own people. The war concluded with the tragic death of Ptolemy XIII. Cleopatra emerged victorious, her rule over Egypt now uncontested. She had gambled and won, but her story was far from over. With the death of Ptolemy, 
Cleopatra stood alone at the apex of Egyptian power. Her alliance with Julius Caesar had not only reinstated her to the throne, but also reinforced her position as a formidable leader in the ancient world. Cleopatra's vision for Egypt was grand. She embarked on a series of reforms aimed at revitalizing the economy, promoting arts and sciences, and reinforcing Alexandria's status as a beacon of culture and learning. As a ruler, Cleopatra was acutely aware of the delicate balance of power. She skillfully navigated Egypt's position, maneuvering between Rome's expanding influence and her own kingdom's ancient legacy. In a bold diplomatic gesture, Cleopatra visited Rome, accompanying Caesar. This visit was not just a personal affair, but a statement of political alliance, intertwining Egypt's destiny with the unfolding drama of Roman politics. Cleopatra's world, however, was shaken to its core with the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BC. This event plunged Rome into chaos and left Cleopatra in a precarious position. Returning to Egypt, Cleopatra faced a new reality. The protector of her throne was gone, leaving her to navigate the increasingly turbulent waters of Roman politics and assert her authority as a sovereign ruler. In this moment of uncertainty, Cleopatra's resolve did not waver. She prepared to face the emerging Roman leaders, knowing that the survival of her kingdom depended on the alliances she would forge and the decisions she would make. Rome's landscape was changing. Two figures emerged as leaders of the divided Roman Empire, Mark Antony in the east and Octavian in the west. Cleopatra's next move would be crucial in this new chapter of Roman-Egyptian relations. In 41 BC, Mark Antony summoned Cleopatra to Tarsus. In what would become a defining moment, Cleopatra made a grand entrance, captivating Antony with her charisma and political acumen. Cleopatra and Mark Antony quickly formed a bond that was both romantic and strategic. Their alliance was a fusion of power, with Cleopatra seeking to preserve Egypt's independence and Antony requiring support for his own ambitions in Rome. Cleopatra's influence over Antony grew, as did their ambitions. Together, they embarked on military campaigns and sought to consolidate their power, both in Egypt and across the eastern Mediterranean. Alexandria bloomed under their union, becoming a center of culture and opulence. The city was a melting pot where Eastern and Western traditions merged, symbolizing the power couple's joint reign. However, their alliance was not without controversy. In Rome, Octavian, Antony's political rival, used their relationship to stir public sentiment against Antony, depicting him as a traitor under the spell of an Eastern queen. The Donations of Alexandria, where Antony and Cleopatra declared their children rulers of various Eastern territories, marked the zenith of their power, but also heightened tensions with Rome. The stage was set for a conflict that would decide not just the fate of Egypt, but also that of one of history's most famous couples. Octavian, now Rome's rising power, viewed their actions as a direct challenge to Roman authority. In 31 BC, the tension culminated in the Battle of Actium. This naval confrontation off the coast of Greece was not just a battle for control of the empire. It was a fight for the survival of Egypt's independence. The battle was fierce and tactically complex. Despite their preparations, Cleopatra and Antony faced a well-organized Roman force under Octavian. The turning point came when Cleopatra, realizing the tide of battle was turning, withdrew her ships. The defeat at Actium was devastating. Cleopatra and Antony retreated to Alexandria, their dream of a dual empire crumbling. Octavian's forces pursued them, closing in on Egypt. In a tragic twist, Mark Antony received false news that Cleopatra had died. Overcome with grief and unable to bear the thought of living without her, he made a fateful decision. In the depths of despair, chose to take his own life. With a heavy heart, and a hand that trembled with emotion, he plunged his sword into himself, hoping to join Cleopatra in death. But fate had one more cruel twist in store. As Antony lay mortally wounded, he learned that Cleopatra was, in fact, still alive. Clinging to life, he yearned for one last reunion with his queen. 
In a poignant final scene, Antony was brought to Cleopatra, who had barricaded herself in a mausoleum. There, in a moment etched in the annals of history, Antony died in the arms of Cleopatra, his love and ally to the end. With Antony gone, Cleopatra was left to face the grim reality of her kingdom's fall. Her beloved Antony was no more, and Octavian's victory was assured. The Queen of Egypt now faced a choice about her own destiny. Faced with the inevitable fall of her kingdom and the prospect of being paraded through Rome as a captive, chose her own end. The true nature of her death remains shrouded in mystery and legend, often said to be by a venomous asp. With Cleopatra's demise, the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had ruled Egypt for nearly three centuries, came to an end. Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire, its riches and strategic position now under Roman control. Cleopatra's life was a tapestry of ambition, romance, and tragedy. Her reign was marked by her intelligence, political savvy, and a relentless drive for her kingdom's sovereignty. Her legacy endures, not just as a ruler of Egypt, but as an icon of power and seduction that has captivated the world for centuries.